happening right now in a bomb shelter. Our next interview right now is a journalist. His name is uh, Mark Savjuk. Thank you again for joining us here on Live Now from Fox. We really appreciate it. Mark, uh, I, I wish we were meeting on such better circumstances, but unfortunately we're not. Uh, first off, can you just tell us how you're doing? Yeah, I'm fine. Uh, all of us who live here uh, constantly every day work on trying to help our, uh, help our military forces fight, uh, trying to supply them with everything this, uh, they need because this war uh, literally takes uh, all our resources and we dedicate all our time in order to help our military uh, to fight the Russian invasion. Absolutely. And Mark, can, can we, we maybe just uh, rewind uh, about nine days ago? What was, what was your first reaction yeah. when uh, the invasion happened? Uh, to be honest, I was completely uh, aware of it happening. I even have a screenshot of email uh, to one of your colleagues, to a Western journalist from Sky, uh, who, who who is talking to me whether the war uh, Russia with Ukraine was possible. And I told him in the e email that uh, for me, it's a done deal. It's just a question of when. And this email was sent to him on uh, 2 a.m. And the invasion uh, began on 4 a.m. So uh, for me, it wasn't a surprise at all. We were all thinking that it's going to happen. We just didn't know when exactly. So when it when it began, we were just like, well, this is it. You know, we were we always thought it will happen at some point. So here it is. Absolutely. And, and Mark, can you just maybe explain to us uh, for, for our viewers really across the country and really around the world, what is it like right now inside of that uh, bomb shelter as you as uh, you are in Kyiv? Well, uh, in Kiev, it's uh, relatively safe. Uh, despite the initial plans of Putin to capture actually Kiev in three days, well, it's the end of day eight, and they have e have not even managed to circle uh, the city. And uh, it's a big question whether it will actually ever be able to encircle the city. Uh, currently, there is very, very heavy fighting in the northwest of the city, where literally the best troops that Putin has is being uh, completely scrapped by the Ukrainian military forces. Uh, so uh, I came here from a relatively safe place from Lviv uh, because I just think that this war uh, needs every person to uh, participate. And I really have a sense of accomplishment where actually there are some amazing people here who are doing their best in order to save their country. And they inspire me like hell. Uh, our country is literally like an inspiration for the whole world that is fighting for freedom and democracy. Absolutely, and Mark, uh, what we are seeing uh, happening in Ukraine, really in all pockets of every community in Ukraine, it is amazing to see uh, just uh, the fight back, perseverance yes. of, of all of the Ukrainians. and. Uh, that right there is so telling, not only to the enemy of, of, of Russia, but everybody around the world. And what is some of the feedback that you've been hearing, just all of the things hearing about the resilience of Ukrainians? Well, look, actually, this is a great point. Thank you for raising it. You see, we don't have enough weapons to put all the volunteers to fight. Actually, you know, this is how this serious situation is. We have more men that are willing to fight than we have arms. So that's why we ask the West to please help us. Uh, I mean, the West already provides a lot of help, lots of military assistance, lots of financial assistance. But uh, for example, I can't join the military because uh, they don't have an assault rifle for me, literally. So, and they don't have enough uh, gear. Uh, our guys are actually at the front line almost without gear, just with assault rifles. And I think because we are fighting the enemy of the world, number one, the West should help us even more because what we are actually protecting is the world peace. So come on, West, get to work, give us more help. May, uh, please help us protect our country from this evil man uh, because Ukraine is really an inspiration for the whole world. The amount of resilience is amazing. Absolutely. So this is it. Absolutely. So would you say you're almost like in a holding pattern because you want to help out, but you can't because you just don't have the arms? Would you say that the West and even even the U.S. as well, were we just late on, on getting supplies and, and armor to you? 
Oh, it's you see, it's yes and no. You, we, you can't really say that the West doesn't do anything, right? I mean, come on, the, the sanctions are incredible. Uh, the financial support for uh, for Ukraine is there. The uh, military support for Ukraine is there. What I'm saying is just we need more. That's what I'm saying. Uh, because uh, if we have all the men who can fight on the front line, we're completely convinced that we can defeat anything that he throws in here. I mean, come on, look, even your analysts, American analysts have been saying that uh, uh, Russian army has been performing really badly because it's very uh, badly organized and it's completely saturated with corruption. So it's breaking down everywhere and our uh, local militia are able to fight it even with like very uh, simple weapons. So uh, we as a country has showed our incredible resilience uh, and we are worthy of uh, more support because as, as, as again, I'm stressing, we are not just fighting for our country, we are fighting literally for the world peace because Putin is insane. I mean, this is not just a power-hungry act for him, like he was doing before. He he has gone completely insane. And uh, I've seen uh, articles from uh, all the insiders in Moscow, and they say that uh, they haven't been told of the Ukrainian invasion simply because Putin thought that it was going to last for just three days. So why bother? I mean, it's going to happen so quick. And now that they're actually realizing that the economical sections are going to be insane, it's literally the end of their economy. So we are going to be here, we're going to fight Putin, and we are going to eventually defeat him, but we just need more assistance. That's, that's what I'm saying. Absolutely. And when you, when you bring up just how insane this is uh, from Putin and the Russians, I mean, I never thought that I would see where uh, just last night, this in, in, into the morning hours, where they are attacking a nuclear power plant. I mean, that yes. really just tells you uh, just what state of mind they're in. Uh, what was your thoughts when you're hearing about that? Look, guys, uh, come on. Uh, I'm, uh, all I'm saying is that Putin is insane, and I'm iterating this point, right? He has been attacking a nuclear power plant. I mean, what else does he need to do for the West to realize that he is literally insane? Okay, it's not just power hungry deals. He's attacking a nuclear power plant. This can be a catastrophe for the whole Europe. And does does Europeans don't want to be, you know, safe? I mean, come on, the sanctions against Russia should be even more. Literally, the whole world needs to stop doing business with Russia. Uh, and Ukraine should be assisted with more weapons and with more funds. Because look, his war right now is about bombing residential areas and killing innocent civilians and killing innocent women uh, and children. This has nothing to do about the war itself. He is just mad that he can't win this war. So he will retaliate, he's angry. And so he will kill civilians, lots of them, thousands of them. West shouldn't just sit aside and look at this. They need to act. Absolutely. And Mark, it seems not like not only is it, a, of course, a physical assault with, with the bombings and the shellings, but also a psychological war as well. But yes. it, it, it yes. seems at, at, they will not be able to break the Ukrainian spirit. I mean, you guys are fighting very, very hard. We're on day nine of this and you guys have not given up at all. Is It doesn't seem like there's any break uh, with the Ukrainians. Absolutely, because we are fighting for our own survival. We will never stop, literally, till the end, till the last guy. So that's why I'm saying that's why the West needs to help us, because this is a done deal for him. Uh, look, uh, for us, it's a done deal question. We're going to fight till the last man. Uh, what we don't understand is that how in 2022, we still need to iterate and explain why Putin has to be stopped right now. I mean, you have social media, you have internet, you see all these footages. He is just plain crazy. He kills civilians. He attacks nuclear power stations. He needs to be stopped now. And this uh, myth about unstoppable Russian army, it's just a myth because his army is as corrupt as his economy. Uh, so because his army is incredibly corrupt, it's not succeeding because it's all full of, uh, you know, uh, tanks that on paper they are new, but actually they're old. I mean, you see how uh, Russian soldiers are equipped. They're not equipped really well, despite him spending billions and billions and tens of billions of dollars on his army, because all it ends up is in, in reaching the top class of the uh, military. They, they have really nice houses, though, which is good for us, <laughs> because if his army wasn't corrupt, we had a much tougher fight for that. 
Absolutely. And Mark, last question. What would yeah. you say uh, to not only Russian uh, civilians, but even the, the, the Russian soldiers that are in Ukraine right now, if you could, what would your message be to them? <laughs> Look, uh, I think it's obvious already from we see with them, uh, it's not their fight. Yeah, that's, the, that's actually the only single message. It's not their fight. It's not their war. It's a war of a one man who is simply gone insane. That's it. He lives in a world where the West is trying to destroy Russia, which is just not true. Because there are so many American companies that did business with Russia, like uh, Shell, BP, et cetera, et cetera. So many companies that did business with them. Uh, no, they don't want to destroy it. He's just an ex-KGB person who lives in this mentality, West versus East. And uh, obviously, that's not true. He's just, gone in, he's just gone mad. He's just insane. He wants to kill everything in his past uh, because he just thinks that this is the only way for Russia to survive. So the only message really for these people is just to stop fighting because it's not their war. They, by participating in this war, what they're actually doing is destroying Russia itself. So if you're a patriot of, this, uh, of your country, you should stop fighting. And they really actually return home and get rid of this corrupt, uh, corrupt politician who Putin is. I mean, come on, uh, all the Russians know that their government is corrupt. This is something that you shouldn't really tell them. They already know this because all their government top employees of the government have huge mansions. How did they get it? I mean, their salaries are so small. This is obvious. Absolutely. Well, Mark, thank you so much for taking the time. And we hope that we could speak with you in the future as well as uh, give us updates, sure. how you're doing and how everybody sure. around you is doing. And, and we are hoping for the very best for you and, and all of Ukraine, because this is uh, one hell of a fight. And you guys are showing uh, just what you guys are all about. And you're fighting for your country at the end of the day of it. Yes. Yes, yes. So uh, the last word that I wanted to say is just please spread the word and help Ukraine because we're going to stop this son of a bitch. There we go. Mark, you couldn't have said it better. Thank you so much.